thank God for the spirited devotion we had uh, so far this morning. I'm praying that your hearts have been encouraged. If you're here uh, visiting with us for the first time, we say to you, welcome. We pray that you may God and Northeast family, uh, your spiritual family, as we journey together uh, through this, this land. So good to, to have with us uh, Brother Eccles. Right. Yeah. 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 Just want to say to him, it's always good to have him when he comes and give uh, us you know, a couple uh, selections, but it was so good. Yeah. It was so, oh, so good. Yeah. Every Sunday. Every Sunday. Every Sunday. Brother uh, Eccles could be here and just be a part of the team. share the blessing with us, uh, the giftedness you have, and so uh, just, just keep doing what you're doing. Uh, we'll see you Sunday, same place, <laughs> same yeah, time, yeah. all right, a little bit early, but same time, <laughs> uh, I must have you, I just got to do it, and it was an encouragement to us, encouragement to a preacher, and yeah, so good to see, see our audience pray, pray for me, uh, because of our preach, it's always good to have mentors that that not just say that they're mentors, but carry themselves as such. Brother Crenshaw is one of those men that not only uh, with pride calls me his mentor, but he has, he has carried himself in such a way where uh, good mentors open up doors for you. They not only help to guide you, but also open doors. And he, he did that for me two years ago where I was able to stand before um, the audience in uh, Houston, the National Legislature. I was able to represent this church, uh, to represent him as my father in the gospel, and, and uh, our spiritual family. Uh, we had made plans to be at the National Lectureship this year together on the platform, on the stage, that asked the three of us, uh, Brother Crenshaw, David, and myself to to do something together. But of course, Pops would not be able to be, be there this time. But they, had, they asked me uh, to still stand before an uh, August crowd and to represent you this year. Um, so, I was able to spend uh, some time with them for Friday and just last night, encouraging, being in his presence, uh, a bit nervous. Uh, going, and uh, I'm always nervous when I stand before the people of God. Right. I always, because I'm handling God's word, right. and it's, it's, it's a serious matter because I'm talking about issues that affect your soul. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So pray for me, and then pray for those who will be going with me. We started with a large group, but it's, it's dwindled down to just the four of us, and so pray that I will be able to endure the presence of Alan Starks, Adam Butler, and David Sharp. Have mercy. And so uh, pray for us. We're we'll going to be leaving this afternoon after we have some, some lunch and spend time with our significant others. Get on the road at 3 o'clock and then make it down there. I speak tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. And then David Wilson speaks tomorrow at 3 p.m. Right. So pray for us that we represent uh, this family. And then also we'll be making our way back early Tuesday morning. Well, it depends on if they want to play golf. Yeah, so they're like, yeah, I gotta come back for work. So uh, we'll be coming back on Tuesday. Uh, so pray that we have a safe journey and things go well uh, while, while we're there. Pray with me at this time. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to stand before your feet. Yes. Father, we know that we are all not worthy to even be in your presence. But we thank you for Jesus Christ. And Father, we just ask that at this time, as you look upon us, Father, 
as we, as we worship you in spirit and truth, our Father, you will see your Son. You will see his blood stain on all of us, Father. And Lord, as I open up your word and break your word to your people, Father, I pray that the meditation of my heart, the words of my mouth, Father, be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. If I should tell you about this true story, would you believe me? A 16-year-old girl in Honduras, uh, newly married, pregnant for three weeks. She falls dead in her home after hearing several gunshots a block away. It scares her to the point where she falls down and she foams at her mouth. And when the, the coroner comes in the scene and she's eventually taken to the morgue, she was pronounced dead. They have her funeral, and at her funeral, the family then hears a uh, faint crying coming from the coffin. Someone goes close and they put their head on the coffin and they could hear the moaning and the screaming and the clawing at the, the roof of the coffin. And so they realize that she is alive. They grab the crowbar and they pry because the way they seal it. And in their culture, they didn't really embalm the body. And so it was a, a quick funeral within three, three days or less. And so, but they sealed it in a way, and so they had to pry and get to it. And by the time they got to her and pulled her out, and they got her uh, to the hospital, she was pronounced dead. Unfortunate story, the doctor said that she died from suffocating in the coffin. Would you believe that story? Do you believe that story? Another story is told of a three-year-old girl in the Philippines who, um, she died from a high fever. They put her in a coffin, of course, again, same culture. They don't embalm the body. The, the funerals take place quickly. And so she's lying in a coffin, and a, a family friend goes and, you know, moved from, from, from sorrow and, and tenderness towards this little child. Family friend goes over to the coffin and starts to adjust her in the coffin and fix the little coffin, and her, her head moves. And her body moves and she, she sits up. Her father grabs her and whisks her away uh, to the hospital, to the emergency room. They attend to her, rehydrate her, and she's alive and well, even if they have to speak. True stories. What would you do if, and I'm being sensitive because some of you may have lost a loved one recently, but what would you do if you were at the graveside of a loved one and the grave diggers were about to pour the dirt or throw the dirt on top of the coffin and you heard your loved one screaming or crying uh, from the coffin. Adrenaline will rush in, You'll, your heart will be pumping. I promise you, with all your dignity, everything will go out the door. You'll jump in that grave and you'll try to save your loved one from the grave, wouldn't you? Right. You'll pry them from the coffin and you'll, you'll embrace them and then maybe a couple hours later, you'll be bewildered and confused because you'll be wondering, how is it that you're alive? How is it that I'm looking at you and the doctor said you were dead? Well, this morning, in the story we're about to look at, the events, these events are true. But there are many people, just like myself, I would have many questions about the 16-year-old girl that, that uh, was pregnant and then eventually died after coming from the coffin. And I would also have questions for the doctors and the family members. How is it you didn't know that a three-year-old girl was still alive? All right. All right. I would have questions for the doctors for my loved one. Wouldn't you? You wouldn't, wouldn't you have questions? Right. Uh, you know, I, I would lose it if I heard, if I was at a funeral and somebody, if I'm preaching a sermon and someone in the coffin, the coffin starts to move. I don't know about you, but I, it, it will, you know, I'll have to give up praise. I'll be rattled. I'll, I'll be shaking up. And I would have several questions. I want to know how in heaven's name <laughs> you are moving. What's happening here? Well, the one, the reason why we're here this morning, the one that we love so much, right. his name is Jesus. Yeah, yeah, he, his funeral took place, but 
Uh, he didn't cry out from the grave. He wasn't scratching at the, the stone that was rolled away. He wasn't banging on it. And then his, his father didn't whisk him away to be attended by the doctors. The Bible tells me that when he laid down, that the power of his father got him up early one Sunday morning. The Bible tells me, and I believe it, and I believe you do, and if, if you're here and you don't know, let me just, I just want to tell you this morning that this Jesus, the reason why we're here this morning, is not to talk about the Easter Bunny or how many eggs uh, the Easter Bunny put out. I know, I know you had your Easter egg on yesterday, uh, but, but I, I'm praying and I'm hoping that you're here this morning Hunting not, not for eggs and fictitious characters, but, but rather you're here uh, hunting for the true master. Yes. The yes. true reason for this day. Yes. Now for us, for those of us who believe, we believe not only on this day that he got up from the grave. But we believe every day that our master is resurrected. He's alive. He's alive because look at our lives. And so for a few minutes, and yes, I did say a few minutes, I would like to challenge your thinking from the topic, a warm visit from a cold place. A warm visit from a cold place. And I'd like you to see three things. Number one, I'd like for you to see the broken word. Number two, I'd like for you to see broken bread. And then last but not least, I like for us to see burning hearts. Come on now. A warm visit yeah. from a cold place. When we get to Luke chapter 24, meet me there in Luke 24, we, we get we come to the middle of the story where Jesus Christ got up from the grave. But in Luke's story, uh, Luke records uh, a different aspect from a, uh, uh, several eyewitnesses of two disciples uh, that Matthew, Mark, and John, uh, they don't mention in their account. In Luke's account, in Luke 24, it's familiar to several, and some of you may have heard this before, about the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. The word Emmaus, uh, scholars are not really sure exactly where this town is. Uh, they're not sure exactly uh, uh, much, they don't really know much about uh, his history, but the word itself means warm or warm travel. All right. And so we take this journey together, I pray, as we go through the sermon for this few minutes, that you will feel uh, warmed by the fact that though this world is cold, and though this world has nothing much to offer. All right. And you may say, well, preacher, I've gotten much. I want to say to you that even the much you have gotten will also pass away. Yeah. Yeah. It's dead stuff. Yeah. But when you take this journey with us this morning, this Jesus, who I hope you will encounter on this road with us, this journey with us, I believe he will warm your heart and make, make your life better. Yeah. Now for us to encounter that, we're going to do some reading because really the crux of my sermon, the three points, are the last verses of, of, of the story. Y'all yeah, following me? Yeah. But we got to get to the verses. Y'all going to walk with me this morning? Yeah. If you don't, that's all right. I'll wake you up when I get to the three points. <laughs> that all right? But, but for those of you who want to walk with me this morning, uh, it was just after the resurrection. There is bewilderment. There is confusion. And like you, being honest, if I was back then, many of us would say, you know, if I was living back then, I would have believed that Jesus got up from the grave. I'll be honest with you, I'll be scared. I would be. It's one thing to tell me that you're the Messiah. It's one thing to tell me that you're the Savior. It's one thing for me to see you feed and teach and help and heal people. And then it's, uh, to see you being strung up on the cross, pinned up on the cross like a piece of dirty rag in the eyes of these Gentiles, these people that don't know who you are, to see you being laughed at and scoffed at, and then to see you die to take your body to put you in the tomb, and then three days later to see you living, I'll lose 
my everlasting mind. I've been looking at Jesus and touching him like, are you for real? And that's exactly what happens in the text. Now I want you to see something here because the issue is uh, not only were the disciples confused, those who wanted to get rid of Jesus were also troubled. Because they were like, we got rid of this Jesus, the one who was teaching against our beliefs, teaching against what we promoted. We killed him, and now we can't find him. The issue in the text is, the question is, well, somebody must have stolen his body. Somebody tampered with this. And I want to say to you this morning, that's exactly the same thing that was happening back then is what's happening today. There are those who are skeptics who say those Christians, those people that go to church on Sunday morning, uh, they don't know that Jesus isn't real. There are some people that want to say to us that they don't know, you don't know that Jesus is just another myth. Matter of fact, somebody conjectured up the story about this Jesus to match with Greek mythology. But I want to say to you, and I hope there's somebody here this morning that just believes that Jesus Christ is real. That just believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That he came and died for our sins on Calvary's cross. That because of his sacrifice, that my life is better. Isn't your life better, church? Lord Jesus, isn't your life better? And if somebody here that needs to hear, your life is better because of Jesus. And I'm not here to knock anybody else's religion, but I've never heard anybody say my life is better because of Buddha. My life is better because of Muhammad, or my life is better because of Krishna. I don't want to die and come back as a leaf or as a fly. I don't want to be reincarnated as some little thing. I just want to die and go to heaven. Yeah, I want to come die and come back, and then somebody swat me and kill me. Then I got to die and come back again. No, I want, I want to have hope that after this mess, even though I have heaven down here, after this, there's something better over there. And only in Jesus do we have that. Anyway, I got a little bit too excited. Yeah, I did. I mean, let me come back down. Here. Right, y'all better help me, man. Get, get excited about the resurrection. I'm about the cross. That's why we have the cross on this. It's not just for show. It's to remind us of what we're doing. Anyway, look at, look at verse, verse 12 of Luke 24. Here, uh, Right after the resurrection, it says, But Peter rose and ran to the tomb. And stooping down, he saw the linen cloths lying by themselves. And he departed, marveling himself at what had happened. Now stay right there. Many times when we read the story, we think that we, we see it from Hollywood's perspective. Hollywood will show us that when Jesus gets up from the grave for the echoes, that the, the cloth that he was in was folded neatly and, and placed on, on, on the, on the sepulchre and in the tomb. But you gotta see this, Northeast. You gotta, you gotta get this. If, if you miss anything in this sermon, don't miss this. That really what Peter saw when he said that he saw the clothes. In the Greek construct, what it's saying is when Peter went in, he saw a shell. Don't miss this. When they prepared the body of Jesus, or anybody that died that day, they would take herbs and spices and dress the body. They would then wrap the body in swaddling cloth and strips, like a mummy. Y'all watch the movie Mummy, y'all y'all seen? Y'all all right? Yeah, they will wrap the body and then put the body in the sepulchre. When they put the body there, and the body is decomposing and going through the state, the herbs and spices will then dry up. Yeah, yeah. And the cloth will stick to the herbs and spices and stick to the body. What Peter saw was not cloths that were taken off the body, unwrapped and put down on the sepulcher where Jesus lay. lay. Rather, what he saw was the shell yeah. Yeah. that Jesus laid in. Yeah. He took off the napkin from his face. 
He folded a napkin, but he left the shell that he was laying in. Y'all are not getting that this morning. That's why when they wrote this, when Luke wrote this in chapter 1, verse 1, he wanted Theophilus to know that Jesus' body was not stolen. That nobody touched anything. But what Jesus did was he got up out of the shell and left the shell to say, I got up out of the shell. Ain't nobody correct me. Nobody did anything to me. I got up by the power of my father. And because of that, I want to say to you, to the devil and to the world, now what? Now that's a testimony for us. Because what God is saying to us is, it's not what Hollywood showed you, but rather it's in the word that your master got up and he left the shell that he was wrapped up in. The shell was there. Nobody messed with the body. Yeah. But that's what's confusing them. So we'll get to verse 13 now while we're on the road. And so the reason why I show you this is some of us are stuck at verse 12. We just say, oh, it's Resurrection Sunday, he got from the grave, not truly understand, understanding what took place on Resurrection Sunday. That's it. Jesus didn't just get up with our power, he, he did get up with our power, but how he got up. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like when he said Lazarus come forth, and then when, he, when Lazarus came forth, he said unwrap him. No, Jesus got up out of the wrapping yeah. and left the wrapping. Yeah. Can you imagine this? Your gift. Your Christmas gift or your Valentine Day gift is wrapped, and all of a sudden your gift comes up on the wrapping. That would just that would just blow my mind. That's what Jesus did. He was wrapped up and he got up out of it and said, "Now what?" That's what Resurrection Sunday is all about. Anyway, I'm going to swim over that, so watch this now. But but some people don't get that. So here they are, these two disciples on the road to Emmaus in verse 13. Now it says, "Behold, two of them." Let's just read it together. Y'all want to read? Yes. Now behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seen seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of these things which had happened. Now, really and truly, what, what, what it's saying is they were arguing. They were fussing because they were confused. Jesus got up, why, why? No, he didn't. It's, they're, they're still, they were just going back and forth. They were, they're, they're, really what it's saying, they were arguing. They were trying to make sense of what happened. And I believe someone here this morning is wrestling to understand who Jesus is. All right, all right. You're, you're wrestling within your spirit. And maybe you've gone in the water, you've been baptized for the remission of your sin, and you still don't understand who God is, who Jesus is. You are in the right place this morning. Yeah. Maybe you, you have not yet given your life to him. We want to say to you, welcome. You are also in the right place. The devil is arguing with you and want, want to deceive you. I want to tell you that Jesus isn't real. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew what? Near and went with them. But their eyes were what? Restrained. God prevented them from seeing who Jesus was. But it was also important because if they could not at the time receive it, they couldn't. There are times when you can't receive what God needs you to receive. And sometimes while you're walking, you may be saying, Lord, where are you? And Jesus is right there beside you, walking with you and talking with you, but you just don't see it. But their eyes were what? Restrained. So that they did not what? Know him. Look at verse 17. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and you're sad? So it's like they're down the road talking and Jesus butts into the conversation. God has a way of doing that. He'll butt into your life. Yeah, it's called book God. That's when you miss that. Yeah, you're good about your business. Fuck God. He'll butt into your life. He'll butt into your conversation and cause you have a but God moment. Anyway, y'all, y'all, y'all see. And he said in verse 18, and the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? <laughs> Have you not known? Come on, he, he's, in, he's talking to Jesus about anyway. Uh, uh, and have you not known the thing which happened there? Come on, what? In these days? And he said to them, What things? He asked that. I hate that. Sometimes 
people, you talk to some people and they, they act like they don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I do that sometimes. Right? It's funny to me. What are you talking about? Jesus said, really? What, 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 what things? So they said to him the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a what? Prophet. He was mighty in what? Deed and word before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and what? Crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he. But we were what? Hoping. We were what? Hoping. Anybody here this morning hope? Anybody here this morning needing some sense of hope? That even though Jesus is right by you, because he said to us in Matthew 28, he said, I will, he says, Lo, rather, Lo, I'm with you always to the end of the earth. He told us he's with us, but there are times, there are times, even myself, I feel like he's not beside me. There are times I feel, can I just be honest with you this morning? Anybody here a witness this morning? And then no, nobody? Yeah, and so if you're here and you're searching, what we're saying to you is, for us, Christianity is real. This walk is real. There are times that though I'm a child of God, a man of God, I don't always feel like that God is with me. There are times I feel hopeless, but I'm still so glad that he is faithful that what I feel that way, his, 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 his faithfulness never changes based on how I feel because there's sometimes some of you, yeah, your best friend will walk in the room and they look all grumpy and based on how they look or how they feel, your mood changes. Aren't you glad that no matter what kind of day you are having, that Jesus still walks with you? That though you may be down, you can't bring Jesus down. You can't bring God down. Rather, he lifts you up. Y'all ain't helping me this morning. They said, but we were hoping that it was he who was going to what? Redeem Israel. And it's significant to, uh, man, I want to preach this too. So, ah, but it's significant that sometimes we look for God to do things our way. He did redeem Israel, but they were looking for it to be done a different way. They wanted to be saved from being under the Roman rule. So there are times when God has already saved you, and you're looking for him to save you your way. Lord, save me from this. Well, I already saved you. Open your eyes. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happen. So they're just talking much longer. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was what? Alive. Alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said. But him they did not see. Then he said to them, here's my first point. Somebody said, finally. <laughs> then he said, yeah. now let's hear from Jesus. Yeah. Oh foolish ones. Is that, what he's, is that what he's saying to us this morning? Yeah. I want you to think. In this sermon, as, as you come, I know it's Easter Sunday, you come and you're excited, but, but we want you to leave thinking. Yeah. Jesus says, oh foolish what? ones. Yeah. And slow of what? Heart. See, it's a heart issue. Yes. If, if my heart isn't right, while Jesus is walking with me, I won't recognize him. Uh, he'll be hid from me. He said, oh, foolish ones and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have what? Spoken. In other words, he says, did you not read your Bible? How many of you read your Bible? Daily. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. That was, I said a camera to show you. When I said read your Bible, all the hands put up and I said daily. Whoop, they went like that. <laughs> I'm glad you're reading. But it ought to be daily. And then not only should you read it, you should read it and live it. Because in it is Jesus. When you read the word and you live it, then you see. 
see Jesus for who he is. And not only do you see him, you see him in you. You see him working in your life. You see him saving you, helping you. You live like him. He said, I got the price. Watch this now. He breaks the word. My first point, broken word. I'm not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his what? Glory. Look at verse 27. And beginning at where? Moses. At where? Moses. Now you got to see this. Beginning at Moses, meaning he started where? In the books that Moses wrote. Now I know you all know this. Please don't embarrass me. Right? You're all good Bible students, aren't you? Yes. Okay, only five of you said yes. Right? What books? This is participation now. It's class time. What books did Moses write? Start with the first one. Genesis. Exodus. Exodus. Give us a love the puzzle. Amen. If you didn't know, no, you know. Right? Don't forget it. He began at Genesis. Y'all missed it. He began where? Genesis. He talked about himself in Genesis. Jesus is where? In Genesis. Genesis. Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Jesus is all through the Bible. So don't just read the New Testament and leave the Old Testament. Scripture is important. Reading is important. And not just reading, but reading to understand. In Jamaica, there's a song that we used to sing when uh, the government was trying to push uh, for, for uh, the, the, the necessity of us learning to read more. The song, I won't sing it, don't worry. It says, reading make it a full man. So read and read all you can. Join a library or buy a book and give it more than just a passing look. Too many of us have bought We've gone to Margells, we've gone to Lifeway, we've bought Bibles, but we give our Bibles just passing looks. We only know our Bibles when you have health issues, money issues, marriage issues, children issues, whatever other issues you have, the only time you may know the Bible is when you have problems. But if you take the time to read your Bible, no matter what's happening in your life, that when issues come, you won't just be running to find the word. The word will be in you. And when the trouble comes, you just smile because the word is in you. So he said, beginning on Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning what? Himself. Then they drew near to the village where they were going. And he indicated that he would have what? Gone farther. Here's my second point. Somebody said amen. amen. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us. For it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went to stay with them. Watch this now. Here's the second point. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, he took bread. My second point is broken bread. He took bread. Blessed it and what? Broke it and then what? Gave it to them. Stay right there. What you just did earlier, if I could get to it, when you partook of the communion, how many of you in your particular communion this morning? What it is saying to us is the resurrection of Jesus Christ becomes real, not only from reading the word, but also when you partake of the things that we do in worship. Y'all miss this. Jesus Christ is real based on the fact that not what, well, sorry, not the fact that Justin Echo sang a song, but rather Justin Echo sang about the one who got up from the grave. It's not about how many songs we sing or how long we sing the song. See, we all caught up on that. Some of you, y'all want to say amen to that one. It's not so much how many songs we sing, but rather who we're singing about. Yeah. It's not about the fact that, well, Butler prayed eloquently. Yes, he did. Yeah. 
Didn't he pray eloquently? He prayed, but it's not so much how eloquently he prayed, but the fact that he's praying to a God of heaven that we believe is alive. It's not so much how long or how short the sermon is, but what you want to know is, did the preacher preach about Jesus? Because here's the thing, whether it's the song, the prayer, or the preached word, it ought to bless your life. And when it blesses your life, when you break bread, it's not trying to flip the, the thing up on the, on the, the lid up or take the crackers and the juice. It's not about drinking the, 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 the fruit of vine or just eating some crackers. It's about the fact that I'm celebrating the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus because my life is better. I see Jesus in this. Yeah. I see Jesus in the song. It's not who's singing, it's what he's singing about. And when you sing about amazing grace, yes. how sweet the sound yes. that saved a wretch yes. like me. Yes. I just want to cry. Yes. Because I know where I've been. Yes. I know what I've been through. Yes. I know, I know, but I know also what God has done for me. Yes. That's what he did. Right. So when he broke yes. bread, when he broke bread and gave it to them, look at verse 31. Come on. Then your eyes were what? Oh, open. Okay. Stop right there. Every time you come to worship, every time you read the word, every time you engage in anything you do in worship, it ought to cause your eyes to be open. Every time you pray, every time you sing a song, it's not just a jam to your favorite gospel song and do your thing in the car and say, yeah, I got my worship on. Every time, whatever you do, whatever you engage in when it's in worship, you ought to see Jesus. Yes. That's how you know he's resurrected. And then people who don't know ought to see him in your life. Yes. When guests come in here on Sunday morning, they ought to see, as we partake of these, the emblems, they ought to see Jesus in us. They ought to see us texting on the phones or, or passing notes or falling asleep. We are, when we come before God, this is, y'all don't get it. Because when, when y'all gonna see, when y'all gonna see the thunder play, y'all don't fall, anybody fall asleep in the fun again? Okay, except for me. All right, you don't come, all right? I'm just, right? But who falls asleep at the, at the game? Right. Nobody. You don't fall asleep. The thunder score, y'all go. Yeah. All right, I know y'all trying to be nice. But the thunder score, y'all do what? Yeah. yeah. When God scores in your life, you ought to come in here. And sit down all uh, nice and, and holy and sanctified and sweet. <laughs> no! When he delivers you from trouble and you come in here, you want to say thank you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah. They yeah. got to be all oh, thank you, Lord. And oh, the Lord has been good to me. How you doing, brother? So, so, oh, I'm, I'm blessed and highly favored. And, and I'm too stressed to be blessed. That's a lie. Partaking of the Lord's Supper, but just saw it as just crackers and juice, 
uh, but really it represents the death, burial, and resurrection. You may have been coming to church all your life. You may have, been, you may have grown up here from a little lad or a little girl, and you know you're, you're, you're 80 years old and you still don't know who Jesus is. Who is he? He's the one that will hold you in the midnight hour when nobody cares. He's the one that will answer when, when you call and that person never answers or they, they hit reject. There's always a way to go. He's the one that, even though you may tell your best friend something, and your best friend with good intention may have, may have repeated it to somebody else, when you go on your bending knees, and you go in your closet, and you pray to the Father, yeah. you never hear your mess again. That's, right. That's who Jesus is. That's, that, he's the one that, even though you're broke, you will provide a way. You, 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 yeah. he, you'll put gas money in your pocket, and money uh, for food for the next text says he vanished from your life. So, look at verse 32. My last point. They said to one another. I hope somebody here this morning. My last point is burning hearts. I pray that you could do what they did. That maybe you could turn to the person next to you and say, wow. Not because of case, but because of truth really cause your heart to burn and you can say to your spouse sitting beside you or your friend or just a brother or sister even a stranger said to them my heart is burning and i'm not talking about acid indigestion or nothing like that. i'm not talking about heartburn this is serious not what you ate last night or what you shouldn't have touched i'm talking about the food you digested just now the food from the word of god are to cause your hearts to burn, yes. to cause you to want more, to say, preacher, preach more, preacher, say a little bit more, brothers, sing more, church, I want, I don't want to leave, I want more, not because of us, but because of him. Yeah. I don't know who you are, but I don't know if your heart is burning. But what Jesus is saying to us, even this Resurrection Sunday, is this. Story is told of a man that comes up to a little league baseball game and he comes to a little league baseball game and he says to the young man, he says, what's the score? And the young man says, 18 to nothing. And the man says to the little young man, wow, I'm sure you're discouraged. The little young man shrugs his shoulder and says, for what? We haven't gone up to bat yet. <laughs> what God is saying to us is this the score may be zero to nothing you may be losing you may seem like you're down and you won't come back up but you have not yet gone up to bat and what God is saying to you is don't give up. Jesus, the score was zero to nothing. The, the score was, was, was uh, the devil, a hundred. Jesus, zero. Mm. All right. But on the third day, he got up from the grave. Yes. On the third day, not only did he get up from the grave, he got up out of the clothes that was holding him. Yeah. My point to you is, whoever you are, wherever you are in your life, the score may be you, zero, Satan, this, or whatever the score is. But God is saying, don't be despondent. When your time comes, get up, you hold that back, you hold it bare knuckle, and you go back to swing. And when you swing, every time you swing with God, you'll hit our home run. Every time. Even when you look like you're losing. So from other people's perspective, they may be saying, wow, you must be discouraged. You just smile and say, no. I'm a child of the resurrected Savior. He got up from the grave, and I will get up from this. This too shall pass. I don't know when, but I do know how. The same power that raised my Jesus 
right. is the same power yeah. that knocked me up out of the marriage yeah. thing. Yeah. The same power that washed me clean. Yeah. And the same power that will help me on Monday. Yeah. Same power that will bless my marriage. Yeah. Same power to bless my pocket. Yeah. Same power that will help me with my school. Oh, yeah. Same power that will save somebody here this morning. Yes. I don't know who you are, but I pray that this was a warm visit from a cold place. Yes. And if you're going back to a cold place, take Jesus with you. Yes. All right. and he'll warm where you are. Yes. May not change the circumstances, but he'll give you hope. Yes. He'll give you joy. I don't know where you are this morning, but I pray you'll leave the cold place that you are at. You will come up to the front. And while I'm talking, this is your opportunity. This is not a moment to put you in this way, but a moment for you to seek the Lord, to beseech the Lord, to say, Lord, help me. Help me to seek Jesus. Help me not to walk by myself. Lord, help me to have a group of people that truly love you and care about you, that I can walk with them. Lord, I need your help. I need your power right now. This is your time to knock on heaven's door. Yes. Say, Lord, one more time. Yeah. It's me. Is there someone this morning that will come? This is your time to pray for your marriage. Your time to pray for your finances. Your time to ask God to break the chains of bondage up in your life. Your time to stop, to stop saying, I can, and start saying, I will. Yeah. It's your time to say, Lord, resurrect me from my troubles. Resurrect me from my grave. This is your time. If there's somebody here this morning that don't know him personally, I pray from the singing, the reading, the preaching, everything that we have done, that you have seen Jesus Christ and we invite you to know him personally, even after this day. If that's what you want this morning, come now, as together we stand and sing. There's a fountain free. It is for you and me. Let